Generally speaking, for most people, life is about uh, gaining stuff. What in uh, Buddhism they might call gaining ideas. All aspects of life. In fact, you can view the whole of life as just one big attempt to gain stuff. Uh, in mundane life, obviously, it's things like money sex, more prestige maybe, if you were into that kind of thing, more knowledge, there's a bit of a curse there but I'll get into it in a moment, longer life, where I live there are lots of uh, retired people, they're all desperate to extend their life as long as they can so you see them exercising grim expressions on their faces. Longer life, uh, better health, supplements, exercise. It's sort of like uh, whatever we've got, it isn't enough. So maybe fame as well. Power, the ability to dominate. There's all kinds of uh, ambitions that people have. Things that they think will make them happier. What most people don't wake up to is the fact that most of these ambitions they have will make them more unhappy. Because believe it or not, generally speaking, you know, short of a dog trying to rip your leg off or uh, not having any food, life is pretty much okay as it is. Um, it was Epicurus who said that uh, the things that we need to live, the basic requirements of food, shelter and so on, for most people are reasonably easily come by. It's not like we have to make extraordinary efforts. There are people in the world, of course, who do, but uh, generally speaking in the West and more in the East, in truth, uh, people find it relatively easy to satisfy those demands. So that's everyday life. Money, sex, partners, romance. You know, the next thing is going to do it. And so we're constantly full of these gaining ideas. Along with these gaining ideas, go obviously goes ambition and expectations. These are the things that will ruin your life. <laughs> anyway, um, the more dangerous kind of gaining ideas are associated with so-called uh, spiritual pursuits. As I've said many times, the word spiritual doesn't really seem to mean anything. If you ask for a definition, then spiritual might be of the spirit. And you say, well, what spirit? Oh, well, we don't really know. Um, if you were to speak to a spiritual person and say what is spiritual, I'm sure they'd have some kind of definition that they'd come out with. But in reality, it doesn't mean anything. And in fact, you can, see, you can view so-called spiritual pursuits as the most wicked thing ever introduced to mankind. Because what is, as soon as somebody's talking about enlightenment or salvation or inner peace, what happens? Well, the person who hears that then wants those things. They become dissatisfied with their life as it is. So, spiritual people, what are their gaining ideas? Well, they've got more and of greater intensity than your average Joe. So, maybe they want enlightenment, salvation. Uh, they, they might just want to be more spiritual, whatever that means. Maybe there's some kind of competition going on with other, other spiritual people. They want to be calmer, more in a peace, maybe to exercise loving kindness. All these things they load upon themselves. At the end of the day, it's just an ambition. To achieve these things. 
taking them away from what they are and what's real. I'll have a quote from U.G. Krishnamurti in a moment to uh, to add to this. But maybe they want to be a better person. Never, ever, ever try to be a better person. You don't know what better means anyway. Uh, you should never, ever make an attempt to improve yourself. You don't know what it means to improve yourself. Of course, there are lots of spiritual people who will tell you what it means to improve, improve yourself. To be more conscious, to be more loving, to be more generous maybe, to have more gratitude, to be more peaceful, have more loving kindness. <laughs> All of these things that ultimately make people unhappy. They make them unhappy because their ambitions that cannot be satisfied because the things that people are chasing after um, have no real substance anyway. So the secret to a, a better life, really, is to drop your gaining ideas. And of course, what happens? Well, we now have an ambition to drop our gaining ideas. An ambition to end our ambitions. The problem with the mind is that it always, or nearly always, creates dualities for us. So ambitions, lack of ambition, both in a way are um, things that are ambitions, you know, to ch go chasing after lack of ambition is to have another ambition. Just like to try and um, diminish your desires is to have another desire. The old Buddhist thing. So, what if everything is okay and cannot be improved? I'm not talking about, you know, the dog ripping your leg off, you know, kill the dog or something or you've got no food well try and get some food or the roof is leaking well fix the roof I'm not talking about the basics needed to exist I'm talking about all the ancillary things that we pile upon ourselves enlightenment salvation karma inner peace loving kindness all that stuff um, in the expectation that somehow we're going to be happier. And there's another thing we go chasing after, happiness. If you want to be really, really unhappy, go chasing after happiness. So, um, what if everything is okay? You don't need to go chasing after everything, like enlightenment and so on. Everything is okay. And really, the only thing you need to do is to understand yourself, not change anything. We never, ever, ever attempt to change anything. So what if you just need to understand yourself? Why do you get anxious? You know, we're, so we're talking about real things that happen in your life. Why do you get anxious or envious or angry? Um, why do you go chasing after things? Just to understand ourselves, never to try and change it. So our emotions, our desires, our thoughts, just observe them and understand them. That's all that's required. I'm kind of um, understating that in a way. Because to come to an understanding of yourself and to be non-judgmental is a very, very big thing. Most people are horribly judgmental. Uh, not only of other people, but of themselves. You know, oh, uh, I'm always getting angry, or, uh, oh, I can never do anything right. They have all this stuff. You know, very often it comes from childhood. You know, so we need to understand this stuff, because we don't want to live our life in emotional pain. So, let me um, <coughs> quote this uh, thing from UG. And this is a brilliant quote. 
it's from his um as you know yuji didn't uh, copyright any of his material but penguin have a book called the yuji krishnamurti reader which is uh, a great book highly recommend it so he says what is keeping you from being in your natural state so what i've been talking about is people not being in their natural state, loading themselves with expectations of enlightenment and happiness and love and you know, all the rest of the things I've mentioned. <clears throat> so what is keeping you from being in your natural state? Just being here now, yeah, okay with everything. Um, you are constantly moving away from yourself. So all these ideas of enlightenment and being spiritual and being calmer and being a better person these things take you away from yourself they're wicked things spiritual people are the most wicked people on this planet because they take you away from yourself with a whole pile of mumbo jumbo that cannot add anything in truth so you're constantly moving away from yourself you want to be happy either permanently or at least for this moment. You are dissatisfied with your everyday experience and so you want some new ones. <laughs> of course you're dissatisfied. The whole pile of spiritual people have loaded you up with expectations of <clears throat> eternal bliss, nirvana, um, perfect peace and so on. You want to perfect yourself, to change yourself. You are reaching out, trying to be something other than what you are. That is almost the most fundamental of, or the most fundamental error or trap that we can fall into. Trying to be other than what you are. You're fine as you are. All you need to do is understand what you are not change it. You are reaching out, trying to be something other than what you are. It is this that is taking you away from yourself. Um, it says it all in that short quote, and the, the uh, UG Krishnamurti reader has tons of this stuff, so it's a very good book. So finally, uh, if you can come to terms with your life as it is, again, I'm not talking of the fact of dire circumstances that somehow you have to address, but generally speaking, your life as it is, is okay. And here's a quote that I've quoted so many times on Patreon. Um, the Patreon people will be sick of it, but it's just such a wonderful quote from a guy called Raya Khan. Too lazy to be ambitious, I gradually, sorry, too lazy to be ambitious, I gradually left it all up to fate. In the sack, three hands full of rice, by the stove, one bundle of firewood. Who cares about delusion and enlightenment? This guy was a Zen practitioner. <laughs> Who cares about delusion and enlightenment? You shouldn't, I don't. What use is fame and wealth in the world of dust? Inside my hut, the evening rain on the thatch, both legs stretched out in idleness. If you can live like that, and you could live like that right now, you don't need enlightenment, you don't need to be a better person, you don't need loving kindness, you don't need uh, inner calm to be more spiritual, you can live like that now. But, of course, your mind has been poisoned by spiritual people. So you're going to find it very hard to live like that. But that's... Once you let go of all the nonsense that you've absorbed from spiritual people and religions, that's where you might end up. Um, inside your hut, the evening rain on the thatch, both legs stretched out in idleness.
So, there's nothing to gain but to drop gaining ideas is not simple and certainly not easy. But, you know, we just practice gradually, gradually, gradually over the years and eventually maybe we come to a point where we've pretty much dropped everything and we can just lay with both legs stretched out in idleness. There's nothing more perfect.